How's the tour going right now? Uh, pretty good. We've played uh, four shows so far. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, 24 shows to go. Yeah. That's a big one. Because you got, didn't do as much touring after the Holographic Universe since you're doing, going through all lineup changes. Yeah, we, we toured uh, earlier this year in the US. Mm -hmm. We toured Europe once in support of the Dark Matter Dimensions album. Mm -hmm. But, but as you said, after Holographic Universe, we went through the the whole uh, vocalist change, and yeah. so we we got stuck stuck yeah, there right, for right. a while. I understand you and uh, you and us are the main songwriters in Scar Symmetry. Mm, yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that process, how it worked out, how it changed maybe for the new album, especially now that there's two vocalists? And did your did your writing change at all? Uh, yeah, it changed a bit because uh, our previous singer, Christian, he used to write uh, some of the vocal mm -hmm. melodies and arrangements. So, so this time around, we, uh, Jonas and I shared those du duties. Mm -hmm. But uh, since day one, the way we write songs is uh, either Jonas or I come up with a, you know, a basic song, the, the riffing, the basic uh, drum patterns or, uh, and some keyboard stuff and yeah. and then uh, either me or Jonas or Christian made the uh, vocal stuff on top of that mm -hmm. and now for the latest album it was uh, the same procedure me uh, I came up with a few songs Jonas came up with a few songs and, and then actually Jonas and I sat together with a microphone and uh, did uh, uh, all the vocal stuff together. So, okay. uh, so basically, I made uh, came up with most of the like the clean stuff, mm -hmm. and he did the the gro growling right, right. arrangement. So it was like, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so did you use actual lyrics or just just like no? That? We just uh, came up with I would like really phony stuff, and uh, so actually, yeah. uh, we have got the uh, the whole album with the. Uh, our, our vocals, you know, it sounds so fucking hilarious. I would love to hear that. I guess yeah. you're released no, as you a won't bonus ever hear it. <laughs> there's, the band doesn't have a dedicated keyboard player, but there's some really awesome keyboard parts throughout the album. So what do you guys do uh, as far as recording those? Do you play and program those? And how do you do that live? Uh, well, live, we have all the keyboard parts on backing track. Mm -hmm. uh, in the studio, we use all kinds of different keyboards. We use hardware keyboards and uh, software synths and some parts we play and some parts we program like mm. really fast runs. Mm. We cannot play it right. because we're not really keyboard players but yeah. but the, the, the slower stuff and pads and stuff like that we play it because most stuff sounds better if it's actually played than mm. if it's programmed and quantized, you know. Right. How involved are you with the production process in Scar Symmetry? Uh, well, the, the last album, actually, Jonas and I, we co-produced it. Okay. So, and then he mixed it. Mm. So, but for all the albums, I've been recording uh, all of my solos uh, in my own studio at, at my home. Okay. So. Cool. Do you have, um, are you using, uh, you have a tube rig that you have set up there? Or what kind of setup do you have to record your, your parts? Uh, yeah, I've got a computer, uh, Presonus audio interface. Mm -hmm. I use uh, different software apps okay. and yeah, yeah. What's what typically goes into your lead tone? Because you have a very distinct sound. Well, I, actually, for the first uh, two albums, uh, I used the Behringer V amp. Oh, really? Yeah. So seriously, really yeah. cheap gear. Dark Tranquility tours with those, and they record with those pretty extensively as well, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really good sounding unit. Yeah. Price, like, really yeah, particular. actually, uh, people always uh, used to ask what I used for the lead sound on those albums, and because they thought it was a great lead sound, but I, yeah. when I listen to it, I think it doesn't sound really good. It's got this huh. uh, kind of uh, high frequencies that you really it's piercing your ears. Okay. You know, if you crank the volume on the yeah, yeah. On, on the albums and you, everything sounds really good. And when the solo comes, it's like, ah, you know. Interesting. Yeah. So, but it's 
that was uh, what uh, was ab available to me at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was cheap and yeah, just plug and play, you know. So yeah. So that's, that's for the first two albums you said, right? Yeah. So what what's uh, your rig evolved to since then? Well, for the, la the latest album, uh, I used uh, software amps uh, while recording it, mm -hmm. but I recorded the, the, the direct signal. So mm -hmm. later on, we reamped it. Okay. So, so we reamped it, and we used um, used a tube screamer and uh, a uh, uh, what's it called a, a Rocktron head uh, and a Marshall cab and just put a microphone in front of it. And uh, for your live rig, what's uh, what all goes into your live rig? How's it different for differ from what you record with? Well, uh, live we started using Line Six gear. Okay. So we use uh, the floorboard pods. Mm. Uh, basically, we use it because it's it's very easy to carry around. Of course, yeah. You don't have to have these big yeah. stacks like we used to. Yeah. Do you guys go direct into PA when you yeah. in your libraries? Okay. Yeah, we go di right direct on. into the PA. So uh, as long as we have uh, nice monitors, yeah, we're fine. So. And actually. Uh, it makes for a much cleaner sound on stage, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you don't have these big stacks uh, in your back, yeah. you know. So uh, it's not such such a big mess for the for the sound engineer, of course, because there's not uh, all this leakage from the from the amps into the mm. overheads on the drums and the vocal microphones. Mm. We've talked a little bit about your recording setup and your gear and then your amps and everything. Uh, tell me a little bit more about your guitars and maybe how you set them up and what helps you do what you do. Uh, well, I play Ibanez guitars mm -hmm. uh, exclusively. Actually, I've been playing uh, Ibanez guitars since 92, I think. Mm -hmm. I've not owned any other brand of guitars since. Oh, wow. And uh, for the last few years, I've been an endorser too. So get Great. some guitars for free mm -hmm. so uh, so I have a, a bunch of different uh, seven string RGs mm -hmm. we got the seven string Cyphos mm -hmm. uh, got an eight string got a six string uh, gem the Steve mm -hmm. I model with a with a flower pattern and the monkey grip okay yeah and, uh, and that's probably my favorite guitar mm -hmm. I've recorded uh, yeah, for all the albums I put out, I mm -hmm. record like 95% 95 of all the leads I with like that guitar. That. Because it cool. sounds and plays so amazing. Yeah. Awesome. What, what kind of gauge strings do you use? Uh, I use 9 to 42 mm -hmm. on the 6 string. And uh, for the 7 string, I add a uh, uh, 56. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you keep uh, your action pretty low to do, to do all the kind of yeah. things that you do. Yeah. yeah. So. I want to kind of go back, back in time and talk. I haven't seen too much uh, talk of how you first got into music, and what made you pick up the guitar to begin with. Well, my my dad was playing guitar when I, when I was young. So mm -hmm. uh, when I was actually, I started playing a recorder when I was nine, I think. Okay. And then after half a year, I uh, switched to violin. Mm -hmm. Don't know why, but. Uh, a few months later, uh, my dad teach me a, f a few guitar chords, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, this and sounds like uh, rock music.
were some of your influence early on and how has that changed? The first uh, album I got was uh, Kiss Alive 2. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I got it on, uh, on a k cassette from my mm. older brother yeah. and I was yeah. like, wow, dee 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 yeah. Detroit Rock City. Yeah. Uh, so I was blown away by that. Uh, and uh, all, all the older guys at school, you know, they were cool. They had started growing long hair and yeah. they had like ACDs, the patches on their, yeah. on their shirts and everything. So, when, and after that, uh, the influences were, I started listening to Metallica, and Iron Maiden, mm. uh, Ingvar Malmsteen's uh, first album. Yeah. That was like, wow. Yeah, that changed things. Yeah. yeah. By the end of the 80s, I listened uh, a lot to all the, all the guys from, from Shrapnel Records, mm -hmm. like uh, Cacophony, Marty Friedman, Jason Becker, yeah. Greg Howe, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Joe Tafola, mm -hmm. all these guys. Uh, and they picked up a lot of stuff from them. Steve I, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I started listening a lot to, to, to like jazz fusion guys, mostly Alan mm -hmm. Holdsworth. Yeah. So, and he became my number one guitar yeah. player. Going back now just a couple of years, I know one of, the, one of the reasons you've talked about with the split with Christian is because of musical differences. And I'm curious, that's one of, one of the parts, but I'm curious within those musical differences, what, what sorts of things did you not, guys not agree on? Uh, we didn't agree on all kind of sorts of things. Okay. But the, the thing that uh, that became, you know, the most important thing for the split was that we couldn't agree on uh, the way we wanted to run the band, if we, how we wanted to tour, stuff mm -hmm. like that, because he didn't want to tour as much anymore and mm -hmm. didn't want to to do shows in the different territories, like, ah, I don't want to play Scandinavia, mm -hmm. stuff like that, so. Mm -hmm. so why, why do you think after several years of working together, why, why the shift all of a sudden, especially after you, that album, Hot Graphic Universe, came out and things were really looking up for you guys? Yeah. Why do you think that the split happened then? Yeah, because uh, everything uh, just... Uh, I mean, we, we, had, uh, we had problems working together since day one, I guess. You know? right. okay. yeah, so every album we did was a struggle. And and I mean, I guess you can see the situation from uh, from uh, from his uh, side too. I mean, mm. so I'm not uh, wanting to blame everything on him, but but we had a had a hard time. So often you could feel like it was us and him. You know, it was two different camps, and mm. we couldn't musically agree on a lot of things. Yeah, musically and uh, yeah, on, on many levels. Yeah. So interesting. And at what point did you decide, once you let him go from the band, at what point did you decide that you want to have two vocalists this time around? Uh, well, actually, on the, on the first tour we did uh, back in 2006, I think it was, uh, one, uh, one of our crew, the guitar tech, mm -hmm. uh, told us because uh, he was, uh, he, Chris was having a a hard time, you know, hitting the high notes and and oh, yeah. uh, was a little bit out of tune. So mm -hmm. so he said, uh, you you guys should let him do the growling only and uh, have someone uh, so someone else do the do the singing. So so that was kind of in the, in the back of our heads that yeah. that is re it's really hard for for one guy to do to do both. Especially when it's like really extreme, one is not so much in between. It's really yeah. quite opposite. Yeah, yeah. because it's. Uh, I mean, some of the stuff he did was is really hard to sing, and mm -hmm. if you do it in the studio, you have hours and hours to to make it happen. But yeah. live, you have to, you know, do of it course. night after night, and yeah, yeah, yeah. keeping uh, your voice in check, you know, for twenty or thirty days in a row. Absolutely, that's that's hard. Yeah, so. Uh, so we we started looking for having two guys, you know, mm. right away. Did did those auditions come back come together quickly, or did it take you a while to find the right people? 
No, it came together pretty quickly. Uh, actually, uh, we knew Robert from from before. Mm -hmm. Actually, he is, uh, from what I've heard, uh, uh, from Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, he is. Uh, it was Christian's, you know, in influence as a growler himself. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, because okay. they are. They played in bands together actually yeah, yeah. before, so. Cool. So we knew that he was a cool guy and uh, with an amazing voice. So. He was our first choice, and then he turned us uh, on to uh, Lars, who's the clean vocalist now. And so yeah. we oh. actually we did an audition with them together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a clip on it of it on YouTube. I know when you guys first announced the two vocalists, and when you guys first started, when you were first announced as a band in that lineup, uh, there were some mixed reactions from fans. They didn't know what to expect because they were used to hearing Christian on on those records. So how do you how do you feel at this point? You've been embraced, or how do you feel? What's the reaction been like from your fans? Mostly, I think it's it's been great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's always gonna be a, a you know tough to introduce a new vocalist or for any of course, band. Of course. But uh, mostly, it's uh, you know in the on in on the internet. Like mm. people commenting on video video clips, right. like wow, yeah, yeah. this sucks. But when we're out touring, I haven't haven't heard a negative comment from anyone. Actually, that's awesome. It's great to hear. Yeah. So perhaps people don't want yeah. <laughs> they don't want to say it to my face or something. But but I think people are really em embracing them, and yeah, and most people understand also that we were put in an impossible situation. With the previous lineup, that yeah. we we basically had uh, the choice of you know just splitting the band up or yeah. or go a new way. Mm -hmm. How involved are you with uh, kind of the online scene and forums and you know all that stuff? Are you into? Do you go online much? Do you yeah, check it out? Yeah, yeah. I've got my own MySpace and mm -hmm. and uh, we answer you know most fan mails we get mm -hmm. from our band MySpace and my own personal my MySpace and uh, I've got Facebook too and people contact me there and yeah. I'm, I'm happy to to answer any questions you know cool stuff like that yeah sometimes I go uh, online on uh, on different forums and mm -hmm. there's a forum called sevenstring.org oh yeah you know it yeah. uh, I post there every every once in a while mm -hmm. and uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, especially uh, there to me, you know, keeping in contact with the mm -hmm. with the g guitar yeah, underground. Yeah. Sure, sure. Is this Scar Symmetry? You're obviously that's the main gig right now. Do you have a day job when you go home, or is this? Can you? Are you able to do music full time at this point? Uh, no, actually, I, I uh, take care of my mama mm -hmm. because she is handicapped. Mm -hmm. So, actually, I make a living. Out of that too, okay. So helping her out mm -hmm. with daily life. And yeah, and I've got my studio set up in my parents' house, mm -hmm. so so I, I can uh, combine that a bit. And yeah, what are some of the things that you like to do outside of that? Like you know, just when you're home, when you're not on tour, not working. Well, one of my favorite pastimes is uh, cooking. Okay. I'm very, very much into cooking food. Awesome. <laughs> so. What kind of food? Uh, any kind. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Looking forward from now, what do you see? The band's been around for about six years now. What do you see your guys, uh, yourselves moving from here on out? Well, I guess we just continue putting out albums and touring and yeah. stuff like that. We're working on a new album right now, actually. Awesome. We, we tracked the drums uh, just the, the days before this tour. So we're trying to record all the guitars on tour. Mm -hmm. So we brought that's, our, we brought our laptops and audio interfaces and yeah. So wow, this is, I mean maybe, maybe that explains how you guys are able to put out four albums within the five six years. Yeah, it's intense. We write songs really fast. Too. Really? Yeah. Cool. Like, oh, we have to make an album. In, yeah. Uh, we start in two weeks. Okay. And yeah. A week later, we have ten songs or something. Wow. Back when Scar Symmetry first got together, um, 
Yunus was obviously working at Black Lounge Studios. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand you were still studying then. Is that right? Uh, can't remember. Yeah, I was studying for a while. Mm -hmm. What yeah. were you studying? I uh, was studying uh, co some computer stuff. Okay. But I dropped out when we started the band. Yeah, yeah. At what point did you decide that, it was, or rather, was that the point when you decided that you'd be a professional musician and you want to follow that all the way? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess so. When, when the first album came out and mm -hmm. we started getting really positive reviews and yeah. we got uh, signed to Nuclear Blast. Mm -hmm. Wrapping it up for young guitarists and aspiring musicians out there, is there any advice that you can give for re helping them reach their goals? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, just, I guess, follow your dreams and yeah. practice, practice, practice. For sure. Any closing words? Uh, thanks for doing this interview. Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure. Cool. Thank you.